a Thursday, I beg your pardon, June 11, uh, 2020. Welcome. I am Citizen Jones. Today, um, uh, let's tell you this. INEC vows not, repeat, not to declare results if Edo and Ondo governorship elections are disrupted, warns politicians against violence. President Buhari endorses tough action against rapists as bill to protect the victims passes first reading. And later on, same president orders military to exact, extract heavy price, did you get that, from Boko Haram for killing 82 persons in Borono State, even as bandits killed 20 in fresh attack in Katsina State. I'm hanging out with, um, as always, BKO Babajide Kolade Utitojo. I greet you, Jide. How do you do? I greet you, citizen. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, Jeremiah Ozo here. I, have, I greet you, too. Yeah, thank you very much. So, Ozo means another one. Yeah, sure. Sure, another one. Okay. Another, another blessing. Another person on my list. <laughs> okay, that's another person. <laughs> okay, so the team is ready. I hope you are. In Nigeria, politicians are generally stubborn and obstinate. Just in proportion as they are ignorant and wrong. You know, they are absorbing scenarios in Rivers and Zampara states in the run-up to the 2019 general elections as they affected the ruling APC there, is building up in both Edo and Ondo states. The electoral umpire, the INEC, has vowed not to declare any election results in areas where the upcoming polls in Edo and Ondo are disrupted by violence. INEC boss Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who was speaking at the virtual event on democracy and elections in West Africa, organized jointly by the Center for Democracy, and development CCD and the US Center for Strategies, Strategies and International Studies strongly warned against violence and thuggery. Uh, and why not, Jide? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Um, INEC has um, issued this kind of threat in the past. Or do, do politicians listen? Mm. The answer is no. Uh, are the actions of INEC <laughs> helpful to irresponsible politicians who badly want to rig elections? I say yes. I've seen elections, including the last election in Kogi, where INEC permitted the re returning of votes from polling units that where elections were marred by vote rigging and violence generally. So if the INEC will enforce its own rules, these things will end. Mm. INEC tells us that, look, the card reader is the only recognized means of voter accreditation, electronic voter accreditation. But you and I know that in many elections, INEC staff, some of them clearly compromised, refused to make the use of the card reader mandatory. Mm. So by themselves and by their conduct, INEC staff compromise its own laid down protocols that are meant to guarantee free, fair, and credible elections in our country. So when I hear the INEC chairman talk about this, I just shake my head. Mm. Because the INEC chairman cannot say in good conscience that he was not aware that in some places elections were marred by vote rigging yet results will come out from such places. The, the truth is, the politician knows okay. that all that he has to do, all that he has to do, is to win by any means possible. It's difficult <laughs> for you to prove your case when you get to, to the tribunal, for example. Hmm. It's 
it's rare. It's rare for results um, announced by INEC to be overturned by the by the tribunal. Yeah. It's not. It's not common. Okay. So what politicians simply do is win by hook or crook, and they don't. They then tell themselves they will go and slog it out in the tribunal. At the tribunal, you will be struggling to prove that you are cheated. Some of your witnesses will not show up, either because the opponent will have bribed them or uh, because they don't want to put their own lives in jeopardy. They oh, simply yeah. stay away. Oh, yeah. So until we allow technology to take hold of violations, all these shenanigans will not stop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We uh, must continue okay. to invest in technology so that it becomes difficult, if not impossible, Mm. For irresponsible politicians who have offered the electorate nothing to force themselves on on the on, on, on the on the Nigerian people. Yeah, Jeremiah, you know, I, without prejudice to what you how you open, you know, on this subject matter, the world is full of men who want to be right at all times. Now, all three of us are bystanders when the elections will come and go. I'm wondering what your perspectives would be, especially considering the Edo governor is digging in, the uh, uh, Ondo governor is not letting go. He says, no Jupiter, even if the uh, elections were, were, were held uh, somewhere o other than Ondo, he, he would still win. You see, what comes to mind for me is uh, the fact that until two decades ago, you know, football game, Football games have been the most competitive contest in Africa, mm. in most countries in Africa. But now, elections are the most competitive. Mm -hmm. Elections are the most competitive. Not, there's nothing wrong in election being competitive, but it must be for the right reasons. I, and you played to, to the referee's whistle. Exactly. Yeah. It must be for the right reasons. But in this case, I think what we have is what we call the do or die mentality of yeah. the stakeholders, the actors in the polity. And I think that that is not the philosophy behind the democracy yeah. that we are preaching. And, and, and when we returned to party democracy, yes. representative democracy in 1999, yes. the slogan was, we are in a learning process. Jeremiah, 20 years plus on, we're still in the learning process. It's, 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 it's surprising. Mm -hmm. At least, a, you know, a child of 20, I mean, a 20 years old, uh, I mean, a 20 year old boy, yeah. he, he, he's, he's no longer a child. And moreover, we are supposed to be learning from where we actually oh, yeah. copy this oh, democracy. Yeah. And I think that is why I'm saying that we must unbundle you know, the do or die mentality. Our politicians must learn to unbundle I, the I'm do or die mentality. I'm wondering if this is possible. G G the old uh, dictum was, you should not encamp where your fathers fell, meaning you take the camp <coughs> further afield. When it comes to um, electoral contest in Nigeria, well, the Nigerian politician sees this as, as a zero-sum game. <laughs> you are not going to tell the politician who has consistently deployed violence as a means of winning an election and who has always um, um, gotten away with it to not to not uh, resort to violence uh, telling him that you are you are you are trying to uh, make it perhaps impossible for him to win that's the way he's going to see it Politicians spend so much money on thugs, they buy weapons for them. <laughs> At the end of the elections, when those thugs have uh, exhausted the money that, um, that was uh, given to them yeah. for the election, they then use those the guns, weapons, yeah. they turn those guns against the people. Oh, yeah. You saw what happened in, uh, in, um, in Kogi state, because the last election in Kogi was highly militarized. And there, there, were, there were shootings here and there. Hmm. I'm not surprised that violence is the recurring decimal in Kogi now. 
we saw what happened with the killing of those uh, uh, policemen in the Sanlu oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the man who owned the biggest and the most patronized supermarket in uh, Lokoja was gone down by bandits just before he got to uh, somewhere around the Kotonkarfi, which is close to Lokoja. So this is what happens. Politicians want to win elections by resorting to violence. And that way, even the cycle of violence continues long after the election has been oh, won yeah. and lost. Oh, yeah. That's how we breed bandits. That's how we breed militants who kidnap uh, uh, people, you know? That's how we breed criminals. So until the politicians purge themselves of the do or die syndrome that assists them by the jugular, this will not stop. I, I, I'm wondering if it is possible. It was in the presence of the IG. Yeah. In the presence of the IG, uh, just they, before they, the election they, in Kogi. They signed the the talks, talks came okay. to the venue <laughs> Why the, uh, the IG was seated. Talks paid came to disrupt. Hired. You know, you can imagine the, the disrespect. An IG hmm. was in attendance, and talks, political talks, could not uh, give a hoot about the fact that the number one policing officer in our country hmm. was was in town. They, they, they took ah. their battle to even the event where that he was attending. So this is this is all because. People get away with blue murder in our country. And, and bad, bad, bad behavior is never punished? It's, it's really punished. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you happen to find yourself in the right camp, nobody will do anything to you. You get away with blue murder. This is the thing. I never can, can preach all of this. It's in its laws that where relations are disrupted or where people re refuse to uh, uh, use the card reader, that results should not be declared oh, yeah. in those places. Oh, yeah. They should be cancelled. But what do we have? Because mm. some of the INEC staff are themselves compromised. It is not a new thing. It's well, not well, a new well, thing. Well, uh, Gide, but what, what I find a little offensive is to believe that INEC cannot uh, reinvent itself. There's always the chance for a new beginning, jo Jeremiah. Yes, yes. I think oh. INEC should uh, move beyond the rhetorics of just uh, reading out riot heart. Than to, you know, INEC should move beyond that and be more critical in addressing electoral, yeah. you know, violence in our politics, you know. And it must be a collective effort. Every stakeholder, everybody must be involved. The civil society, the citizens must be engaging too in making sure that we put this. As, as we take it home, um, Jeremiah, how do you, what do you tell the governor of Edo State? Because he's watching you. Yeah, I've said it's, it's, it, we must, you know, the beauty of democracy is not really attached to our own personal interest. You know, we are to serve the people. Mm. So it's not supposed to be about our own interest, but the interest of the people. Okay. So if the people want you, you take it. And if the people don't want you, so it should not be about our own personal aggrandizement. Yeah. GD, uh, I know that Arakuni it must be watching this show uh, uh, because what uh, what facts we lay on this table must be something he he wants to uh, chew. What, what do you what what do you tell him? Yes, I I will tell him to play by the rules, and that's what I'll tell others, not just Arakuni. Um, if you have done well for the people. Leave them to take the decision whether to retain you or not. Okay. Uh, don't force yourself. Because the, the people, people are the final. Yes. Yeah. They, they, they are the final say on this. Yeah, don't, don't force yourself on the people. Okay. W quickly, we have a Marcel from Lagos uh, joining the uh, joining issues or maybe raising new ones uh, with us. Marcel, good evening to you. Good evening. Yes, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much. I. I like the topic you are treating, but just to contribute that I think may have good intention, but after the good intention, the Supreme Court will still reverse it. Okay. You know what happened in Imo State in the last senatorial election, where I next said they won't declare the former governor uh, as a senator because of violence. 
But you said the court went and reversed it. So right. most of the time, I don't blame INEC because they are handicapped. That's one. And secondly, our security men are not helping matters. Look at what happened in, in, in Kogi State. After the whole violence, the election was, was, was still upheld. After mm. all the promises made, made by the IG. So why are we fooling ourselves? In fact, every politician will do whatever he wants to win the election and at the end know that nothing will happen. Okay. If we had been able to cancel that Kogi election, then, then we know the things where everybody has to line up. So, you know, Babajide, I thank you. Please keep on preaching the, the good news, whether they hear or don't hear. But do you... Okay, I'll okay. do my best. Whether yeah, they hear that, or not. Uh, nobody ever does more than his or her best. So that's what we want to do. So I, I have, a, in, in closing, finally, let, let me share two quotes of Adolf Hitler, one for the Edo governor, the other for uh, Arakuni uh, in Ondo State. For the Edo governor, Hitler said, if you want to shine like the sun, you must burn like it. And uh, for Arakuni, anyone who sees the sky as blue and paints it green, and anyone who sees the grasses and paints them blue should be castrated. I'm done. Okay, suddenly, you know, almost everybody is talking about sexual assault, sexual misconduct, or in the everyday parlance, rape. Truth be told, the devious, vicious, vicious offense of rape takes place almost every other hour in our jurisdiction. The most dementing is the rape of children and tiny tots. President Muhammadu Buhari has endorsed any appropriate top action, including any harsh legislation, as may be dra drafted by the M Minister of Women Affairs, aimed at tackling the increasing rape of girls and women and minors across the country. We can tell you that the bill to protect victims of rape against stigmatization passed its first reading yesterday on the floor of the Senate, sponsored by Senator Sani Musa from Niger State East. It is known as Rape and Insurgency Victims Stigmatization Prohibition Bill 2019. We have also seen this before. Well, um, what uh, we are trying to do now is to, as a people, come together to fight this problem. There are two issues here. There is rape, there is defilement. You cannot rape a thought. Anybody, oh, yeah. yes, that is defilement. But people erroneously they say, oh, four-year-old get rape, three-year-old get rape. No, you can't rape somebody that young. You defile. So the laws have to be clear. In my view, you must come up with laws, both for defilement, because that is a, an elevated level of that madness. Yeah. And then, law against rape. So, we have to show that rapists, have over the years, um, not received the punishment that they deserve. So in my view, we have to look at our laws again, come up with far more punitive laws that will ensure that the rapist is treated like the beast that he is. Oh, yeah. In our country, people take advantage of women. Look at um, the case of the doctor, the medical doctor who raped an 11-year-old girl in Benway. He came home pretending to be drunk and then raped this girl, took advantage of the fact that his wife had traveled. There is also the issue of the mental health of 80-year-olds, 70-year-olds, raping their own children, raping Guess as young as five years. I mean, defiling guess as young as five years. That is a mental health issue. So we need to descend heavily. And I support NANS, which, uh, as a body, has called on the wife of the president, the first lady, to mobilize wives of governors, mobilize wives of our federal lawmakers, Another big 
um, political office holders to rally against rape in our country because it has, it has assumed epidemic proportions. And during this coronavirus, more people have been raped. They do not just rape people. They go ahead and murder them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is that happening? Mm. The Minister of Women Affairs said during this period, uh, because many people have been locked at home with rapists. So rape has really shot up in our country. But we too must respond appropriately. And I believe that our laws and the manner in which we treat rape, uh, rape victims must change. Yeah. That is what the president uh, is trying to do, according to the Minister of Women Affairs, that look, the police must ensure that anyone accused of rape does not escape, especially if he's found culpable, must not escape justice. And the judiciary must also ensure that cases of rape are expeditiously uh, treated yeah, yeah. so that these guys do not get away. I'm, I'm happy with the governor of Ekiti State because he seems to be determined to make sure that rape is banished in the state and is taking steps towards that. We need to shame these people. You see them, they go to court when they when uh, on the day they are raped, they'll be covering their faces. So oh, yeah. if you oh, are yeah. that shameful, why would oh, yeah. you go and rape uh, uh, someone? It, if, it, if, you, 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 if, if you are someone who really suffers from shame, yeah. why would you go and rape? You are covering your face so that they don't take your photograph. No, they deserve to be disgraced. Jerry, you know, he, he says the word, be, there are two words there, yes. defilement and, of course, rape. Mm -hmm. I, I buy that. But how do you reconcile <coughs> a man, a father, who defiles, attempt, well, defiles the daughter? Has that got any name? I, I, it's... You know, the, it, I, we, I, we, find it very difficult I, I think it's a different mm -hmm. level of you know, that's mental madness. wahala. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and, and that's that why for, that yeah. mm -hmm. for someone who have been observing, you know, who have been, you know, following up developments and, you know, from Uwa's case in Benin mm -hmm. to, in fact, Baraka. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. to Baraka in Ibadan, to even there's a latest one in Delta, where a pastor actually raped a 19 Mm -hmm. Yeah, old girl. You, you never can tell the one that's happening, even yes, as we're yes. speaking. They are not you know? Even, no. even, even the issue of sexual harassment. In fact, there is a particular lady we were speaking to, and she said she was being harassed in a bus. She was traveling down from Abuja down to Akure, I think, during the lockdown, and a particular man was actually harassing her. Yeah. And she got to the checking point where the security operative, and she, in fact, she managed to video the acts when the man was actually, you know. Okay. And the people in the bus, they say, you know, when she complained, they said, why are you complaining? You don't want uh, people, your, uh, people's, uh, someone's body to touch you. Go and put your own car on the road. These are the things our women face. In fact, when she got down at a particular checking point and was reporting to a military officer that, look at what this man, I have evidence, I have a video. Yeah. The police, the, I mean. Je Je Jeremiah, except that somebody, somebody like me, sometimes I can decide to be cynical. Did she have any reason to travel? You know, but, but that's neither that's, here nor there. That's, 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 uh, it's a two-way street. Our women mm. are actually vulnerable at this time. And, oh, yeah. and, and oh, yeah. in fact, the case in Abuja again, where a 55-year-old woman was actually killed yes. and was buried in a septic tank. Even oh, in right. a kitty, a 77-year-old uh, woman was actually attacked in her house and she was thrown, you know, it's, and it's, you hear it's, silly, stupid, it's, it's, uh, uh, idiotic things like, oh, maybe in a ritual, whatever. Whatever name it is. Or, or, or that the woman didn't dress properly. Or something. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. Not today. I think. Not uh, today, women know they dress properly, you know, it's, and so on. No, it's it, embarrassing. It's, uh, there, there can be no. There you, can be nothing. You, you, uh, you can't defend it. If it's, if it's crime. Nothing should encourage you to take to crime. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Mm. Uh, if, if a woman chooses to walk past you naked, you take your eyes off her. You know, uh, yeah, it's difficult for, uh, for uh, mere mortals. But you take your eyes off her. Yeah. You know, so you can't say because somebody dressed uh, indecently or obscenely that you are moved 
to carry out an illegal action. If, 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 if these arguments are senseless. You cannot, oh, yeah. you it, can't stand before you, a judge you can't and, rationalize and, and, use, it. Uh, and use that as an alibi. Absolutely. Uh, oh, because oh, yeah. It was because uh, I was tempted by, by, by the fact that she dressed indecently. Mm. Who, who does that? You can't take it, to crime because someone, someone uh, didn't dress in the way or uh, didn't have her uh, entire body covered up. Oh, yeah. You know, so there is a lot of work to do in our country. It has it, been said that even the policemen do not handle these matters well. Absolutely. Yeah. They ridicule the women Absolutely. by the nature of questions they ask them when they go to report. So many rape cases go unreported. People, the victims just live with it until the rest of their lives. It, 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 it constitutes a serious mental agony. They live with it, they die with it, because the society ridicules you for mustering the courage to oh, yeah. report yeah. Yeah. A, a, a stupid man who raped you. Oh, yeah. And Jeremiah, I'm, 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 I, I hope, I can only hope that the bill, which has scaled the first reading, uh, which has to do a lot more with stigmatization, you yes. know, would uh, yes. go the whole hog. Yes, yes, I hope so. And I hope, uh, if, 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 and I hope state also must add curry to actually domesticate some of these, some of these bills. Uh, uh, all right, so, sorry, I hear we have company. Oluweye is reaching us from London. Oh, well, the Queen, oh, well, is reaching us from the Queen's country. Uh, good evening, <laughs> Oluweye, welcome. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Hello. Yeah, yeah you are I can on. I hear you. Okay. Um, I just want to contribute to the current topic about uh, the forgery being uh, being witnessed in uh, politics. Oh, oh, well, yes. Yeah, so I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So so we can move ahead. The current topic is rape, and you you we record the rape in the Queen's own country too. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I'm watching uh, General Fag now, and that now is, um, is uh, about politicians uh, reaching elections or about oh the do competitive elections. That's what I can see on this. Okay, that's what you're saying. Okay, it's all right. Maybe it's a delayed uh, uh, signal. Okay. Not, 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 to, not to worry, but you have 30 seconds. Go on quickly. Yeah, can I talk on the EU of the government chief election? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and mm. All right. Yeah, my, my only contribution is this. It looks the government in Nigeria is not ready to uh, deal with the issue of forgery in uh, politics in Nigeria. The problem is that politics in Nigeria has been monetized. Hmm. Once you're a politician, the sky is the limit about the West. So in view of this, politicians are ready to die because of this. But if I say me, <coughs> here the government can make sure that politics is, is not attractive, money-wise. Money yeah. Then you see a lot of people, they will come up. And you mm. see those who are really interested in politics becoming up. In as much you see how this situation, yeah. where a governor has access so he calls you both of maybe several million a month. <laughs> he, he does anything with the money. Oh, oh, well, yeah, th 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 thank you. We share, your, we share your sentiment. Thank you very kindly. Uh, our constraint here is time. Uh, Rights Act here. We, ca we can connect it. Um, yes. Many states, excepting 11 or so, have not adopted it. And uh, it, it should prick any conscience, especially a governor who is head of a, a state at yes. a time like this. Yes. And uh, there's also the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. Yes. Uh, yes. VAPA 2015. Uh, only nine states have uh, domesticated it. Uh, this will enable us to deal decisively with the matter of rape in our country. Uh, pol the police also need to realize that rape cases, the investigation of rape cases shouldn't be compromised at all. 
because the fear that people will not get justice is one reason they don't go to report oh, yeah. this, uh, this beast, yeah. you know, after being raped. So we need more people to come out. We need more women to show courage to come out and expose rapists so that we can deal decisively with them within the ambit of our law. And if need be, then capital punishment, especially where the victim dies in your hand, capital punishment should be allowed to happen because that, in my view, is what will keep this rapist away. Oh, yeah. they, they need to be dead. Je to Jeremiah, I'm, 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 I'm picturing it in my mind's eyes now. A, a, a five, six, seven-year-old girl uh, whose back was shown and the dress dripped in blood, you know, and you say it will, it is, a, it belongs in the past. The, the, the girl will never recover. No, 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 no. Will it's, never it's, recover. It's the mental agony. Father, I've had uh, one or two conversations with uh, people who are actually caring for these rape victims, defilement, huh? stories. It's worrisome. The mental agony in itself. It's da dam damaging a, a human being. Yeah. And that's why uh, we, in most cases, mm -hmm. irredeemably. Mm -hmm. Yes. Irreparable damage. Yes. Yeah. In fact, some, some people have actually suggested a capital punishment for this kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Perhaps mm -hmm. this will serve as deterrent. Yes. Uh, some okay. of them are moved to suicide. Yes. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. You can't stand it. Yes. You can't you remember stand it. Remember the Case of the broadcaster that was raped. Oh yeah, some years our ago. colleague. Yeah, yeah. By ro raped by armed robbers and she took and who her, she went took on her own life. the robber went on TV confessed mentioned her. Yeah, crazy. All right, all right, okay. As always, as is to help mold opinion, uh, we we do no more than that, mm. and uh, we wish the National Assembly well. I hope they know time is of the essence. And we have many laws, gentlemen, but give effect, give teeth to these laws. Mm. All right, then, uh, to our next story, the last one. The dead devilry of the Boko Haram group is becoming more sickening, to say the least. Its brutal killings of tens of people in Gubbio village in Borno State has deeply incensed the president into ordering the armed forces to extract a heavy, a heavy price from the terrorists over Borno killings. Uh, the command by the commander-in-chief also affects bandits in Katsina State who are known to have killed over 20 people there when did living in interesting times. Well, negatively interesting times, you will say. Um, uh, these are terrible times for our people in Katsina, in Sokoto, in um, Borno State, in some parts of even Adama State. They are still some communities in Adama State where you cannot move around freely without the, the threat of uh, being killed by Boko Haram. Mm. Places like Madagali, you know, Boko Haram still operates um, in some of those areas. And in fact, during the last election, election didn't take place in many of the wards. In in, uh, in, in in Adama, even Adama okay, State, okay, okay. you know, there are some highways as we speak in Yobe State. Except you are prepared to die, you dare not travel on those on those roads. Um, the same thing in Borno State. What we saw, what happened um, in that uh, village in Gubio, local government, uh, is testament to the fact that. This war has not been won. Uh, there are uh, people who have, um, even on social media, who have asked the question, why is it that when we are winning, Babajide doesn't talk? I talk only when I have evidence that we are indeed winning. So it's a silly thing to go on social media and say, why is it that Jide doesn't talk about Boko Haram when we are winning? We have not won. We are here to win. The evidence is there. It stands out 
like a giant in a room full of dwarfs. Hmm. You so, know, and, and what, so, what do you want me to say? You, you know, we expected, we expected uh, a, some mileage after the uh, Chadian president really yes. uh, hit them hard. Yes. So, you know, going in to finish the job, well, we said it here. So, what, what, what's, where's the problem? You see, one thing I know about the opponent is that the opponent is resilient. You know, for them, this is about a dogma. They believe that as they continue to fight and kill this innocent people, they will go to um, heaven. Mm -hmm. So to, to take that off them, you need extra effort. We've been in this situation before. This opponent, you just need to crush him. Don't, don't announce that, oh, Shekau is about to uh, surrender. You know, I said it that oh, he yeah. will not surrender. Oh, yeah. I've been vindicated. You know, Shekau himself won't come out to say, no, I will not surrender. You know, so it, we misread the opponent. We imagine the opponent to be weaker than we think he is. We still see the opponent simply as, uh, okay, rag tag army. Mm. Rag tag army, chasing soldiers out of their barracks. Not once, not twice, not it, three times. And it has, many times. It, such an army has nothing to lose. Absolutely so, nothing. So it fights dirty, fights. They have no, they, they have no uh, plan to even return to their homes. Mm. <laughs> they've they've, they've uh, divorced their women. They've uh, broken up with members of their families. So mm. they are just fighting. They believe it's a jihad <laughs> and that they will get reward okay. uh, from, from somewhere. So this is the thing. I've always said, look, let's not underrate the enemy. Let's not jubilate too early. Let's not imagine that the war has been won because... The truth is the war has not been won. Every day now, sometimes three attacks in one day. Mm. An enemy that is defeated cannot launch three attacks in one day. Some mm. of them attacks on troop locations. Let's tell ourselves the truth. People can call me names. That is their problem. Okay. That's their problem. The, I made up my the, mind that I will speak the truth. In a situation it, I find out it, myself, it, I will speak the truth. It, so in the, in the truth case, in this case is that this war has not been won. Because the instruction that the president is giving now, if the war had been won, there would have been no need for oh, the yeah. instruction. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. We will be partying, I will be jubilating, we'll be thinking about how to resettle people from those uh, numerous villages in yeah. Brno North, for example, where people have not lived in since 2014. All right. You know? Even the governor, his village, I've, I've said it repeatedly, I dare anybody to say Jide lied. Zulum village in Monguno local government, that is the hometown of the current governor of Bono State. Mm. The governor has not gone to his hometown in years because people don't live there anymore. It's not huh? safe. All right, all right. So this is the situation. It, it, Let's do our best to crush the enemy. That should be our goal. Okay. When we crush the enemy, we can all sit back and say, yes, this is how we it did it. Worth but most trouble. times, it's either we jubilate too early or we, we leak our own strategy to the enemy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why a philosopher said, don't show your plan to the enemy. Show him the result. As a matter of fact, that's, that's it, what it, we should be doing. Otherwise, if your enemy is making a mistake, Jeremiah, allow him. Don't yes. interrupt him. Mm -hmm. you know. But in this case, we, we warn the enemy. And, and so on. But let me take you, uh, Jerry, to uh, Katsina, where the gov governor initially entered a deal with bandits. And uh, he, he was quoted as saying the other day, the, whatever deal I had with, with the bandits are behind us, no show. And now this one. You see, at, at this point in time, I think I don't envy the people in authority, I don't envy the government because one of the biggest contracts, social contracts between the people and the authority, the government, is the protection of lives and property. And the government, I mean, the governor would do anything humanly possible to protect the life of people. The last time I checked, Boko Haram has killed more than 30,000 of our people and they are still counting. And we have banditry is an offshoot, Off. and it, it has its, its own, its own uh, damaging effect. So, 
But what is painful for me is that by now we are supposed to have learned, you know, the onslaught has been since 2009, you know, if I'm not mistaken, and we are supposed to have learned something on how to tackle and how to address this issue in terms of rejuvenating early, just like as BKU said. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, our security architecture needs to have learned something. Perhaps, I mean, perhaps if it's going to require a collaborative effort from other African countries, I think uh, this is the time for us to actually... Uh, you so, know, so which is a lesser evil, if there's any such thing? Banditry or Boko Haram? I don't think there's a lesser evil. Good. Evil is evil. <laughs> uh, so when you go, when you negotiate with a bandit, what do you expect to come out of it? Yeah, that's why I said, I, you know, I've never, I've, I've never been a governor before. That's what I'm saying. The most important thing is to protect the life of, 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 of the, I mean, of the citizens. Yeah. You understand? And I think a governor will not be happy seeing his people being slaughtered. Slaughtered. In, in and I think blood. by any means necessary, we want by, to by a group he negotiated peace with. And I'm wondering, Gidi, if you can yeah. negotiate peace with bandits. You can. You can? You can. And I'll or saying, take me I'll, there. I'm saying where he succeeded. He succeeded in Kano. Okay. The governor of Kano negotiated with uh, bandits, cattle rustlers, and that, um, and he granted them amnesty. And since that time, there has not been any attack on people um, in that state because the Falgore forest, stretching from Tudunwa, the local government in, in Kano State, um, to the fringes of um, Plateau State, used to be the home of cattle rustlers. Mm. When they steal cattle, they will go into Falgore forest, extensive forest at that, okay. and hide. But the governor, uh, this governor, uh, Ganduje negotiated with them, granted them amnesty, and we've had peace. We've so, had so peace. What, what, what do you think is wrong with the Katsina version? Well, the truth is, in truth, it is dangerous to negotiate with them. I agree absolutely. But what I'm saying is that it's not in all cases that you negotiate okay. with them and uh, you don't get the result. Okay. For some time, they stopped killing people in Katsina. I went there. I spoke with the bandits. They promised me on camera that they will stop killing people. We still have it. We still have the video. All right. They said they will stop killing people. But I'm surprised that they are back to killing people. Uh -huh. They've even relocated to, uh, to uh, another part of the state. And they are killing people every day. No, we'll get back to that. Onyeka is reaching us from Benin. Uh, Onyeka, good evening to you. Yeah, good evening to you all on Journalist Angas. We greet you. But, um, yeah, I want to talk based on this armed banditry issue. I think the governor of Katsina was not strategic. And why I say so is, why I say so is this. When, uh, when he negotiated with the bandits, you see, whatever negotiation he had, he should, he should have known that it's temporary because there, there's no honor among thieves. Yes. So he should have planned it. He should have, after the uh, negotiation, we did, uh, it's, he should have planned an internal security mechanism to deal with them in case they decide to in case they decide to uh, break the agreement. Mm. This is what you should have done. But you got complacent and relaxed that oh these people uh, would agree with them. These are criminals. Once they finish the money, they will come back and continue what they are doing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Then speaking of Boko Haram, I want to talk based on Boko Haram. I'll be quick so I don't waste your time. I think this issue of Boko Haram and our armed forces, I don't really think they are really serious about it. Sorry, maybe I'm being a conspiracy theorist, but I doubt if they are serious about it. But sometimes it's like they will leave, so a military willingly give out information. This is what they want to do. Sometimes I think oh, yeah. it is intentional to quickly signal them. Maybe there's, 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 there's a conspiracy inside that we don't know. Maybe I'm just being a conspiracy theorist, but yeah. something yeah. is not right. Yeah. When, it, Chad, it, when it, Chad did that job for us, which have gone immediately, at most, oh, at, yeah. oh, at yeah. most two days, at least two days, which have given at most two days, which yes. have gone immediately to more for. Yes. But they're wasting time, wasting yes. time. Maybe it's intentional, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Onyeka. You, you know, we, we are grieving here. You know, it's a natural thing. And to think, gentlemen, that this thing started like child's play in 2002. And here we are, it's become a full-blown Frankenstein. E-swap, 
Boko Haram now ISWAP has joined yeah. and it's it's a larger field we are dealing a larger enemy we are dealing yes. with. Um, the, 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 they've transited from Ansaru, from Boko Haram to Ansaru, from Ansaru to ISWAP, and even the mm. ISWAP group, there are some factions have come out of um, the ISWAP group as well, because in 2016 they decided the um, the, the group broke into two. Some of them left Shekau because they were angry with Shekau uh, for the fact that he was killing Muslims. Hmm. He would go into villages, whether people have offended him or not, he would kill them. They then said, no, we do not have any business killing civilians. Our business is killing soldiers and policemen and other security uh, operatives. That was, it was on that basis that the uh, Islamic uh, state of West Africa uh, uh, province broke out and then they named a leader. ISIS, ISIS named a leader of that breakaway group and effectively sidelined Shekau. Well, Shekau refused to stop fighting. That's part of how they took the leadership away from him. He refused to stop fighting. And today, yes, he's weakened. But because we have not been able to get hold of him, kill him, he still manages to hmm. deceive people here and there, deceive his fighters, and rally them to, to attack innocent people, attack villages and the rest. Look at what they did in that village. They gathered them like they were going to preach to them. And they told those of them who had guns to drop their guns, and they uh, started preaching. While the preaching was on, they opened fire on people. That was what they did, because in that community, they had been resisted in the past. You know? So this was actually an opportunity for them to avenge what happened in July 2019. <laughs> but the people were unsuspecting. Hmm. And for all those hours that they were there, and were, were moving 400 cattle out of that uh, uh, village, there was no, no form of um, um, help yeah, from, anywhere. From, from the security agencies. So those guys were slaughtered. They were there for hours, like six hours, hmm. and help never came. That is the most difficult aspect of it. I fear for people of Ascari in Casina because the way it's going, there will be no fast carry local government anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody will be able to live in that local government because every day they are going there to kill people. Bandits are killing people. And no help as we speak. Most times they will have finished killing people before the security agencies will come. You can imagine the police came to give them cover to bury the dead. But the police couldn't get there to stop the, the attack. Mm -hmm. But you can give them cover to bury their dead. Why not position security agents in that area to forestall further attacks on these uh, hapless yeah. citizens? Yeah, uh, Jerry, mine is negotiating with bandits. You, you know, in a 21st century world where a bandit is a bandit is a bandit. He has no other yeah, definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think the, I mean, the last caller was actually, I mean, he made a very valid argument, you know, perhaps a plan B should have been put in place in terms of uh, strategy to actually address this because these are bandits and we've also agreed that these people, you know, they act like, uh, in fact, they are mentally unstable. So I think uh, that's what should have been done. Has it ever occurred to you to think that this banditry was invent is an invention of politicians? Right or wrong? Well... Over time, yes, yes. If because we look at it critically, use them, we we absolutely we, we, we absolutely discuss this in the course of the evening. Uh, yes, absolutely. You use them, dump them, and uh, if nothing is coming, they of course self help. Yeah, self -help it, yeah, is, uh, yeah, exactly. And that's the reason why I've always maintained that until we make our politics our politics less attractive, until we st start having that philosophy of if, of politics being about the people. Oh yeah. Not about personal aggrandizement or selfish interest of the politicians who mm. still continue in this trend. All right. So GD nothing more to say, you know, just to take it home. Yeah. Uh, from the top, let's start Undo Edo ahead of us. 
Yes, uh, let the politicians play by the rules. The rules are clear. Um, it's barbaric to rig elections. Mm. Even smaller countries in Africa, they do elections, and the elections are usually free, fair, and credible. Mm. Now, the giant of Africa can hardly do an election that we can, we can hold up, mm. you know, as a solid election. Yeah. Every time election gets rigged in our country, people will be shooting, people get chased oh, yeah. away from oh, yeah. uh, polling centers. That should end. Okay. Then the the, the, uh, the rape of our uh, of our young women and even uh, other people, whether they are old, I've seen okay. even seventy year old, yes. eighty year old yeah. rapes. Yeah. Yeah. It has to stop. We have to tell ourselves that look, whatever it takes, the, the violin, whatever the, the it takes, defiling minors. Yes, it, it for makes me no has, sense. Has no definition. No, no, name. no, no. There is no I'm way sorry. by which I'm you can sorry. describe it. It is that's why I said it's an elevated level of madness. Absolutely. You know. So that's no, it's just it's just uh, unfortunate. All right. So for the viewer, the our job is almost done. Uh, safe to say, thank you for always sharing the one hour with us. Ours is just to lay the facts on your table, on your laps, just so you realize your catharsis. Uh, from Jeremiah Ozo, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, BKO. I agree too. You can only get better. Yeah, and so on yeah. behalf of all the backroom boys here. That will just about do it for today. But if you missed this ex ed 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 edition, you may also see the program on other platforms we display on the screen for you. And also on YouTube at youtube.com, uh, TVC News Nigeria. The feedback channel remains the same. I am Citizen Jones. Bye-bye now. <laughs>